Real life. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. It's Anita <laughs> and Dario's adventures. Everything for you to oh, live your life with the Mediterranean lifestyle. We talk about food, cooking, travel, relationships, anything to kind of get that spark going again in your life. So today we've got an incredible guest and his name is Giacomo Parisi. He is the owner of, I think co-owner of PNG travel. Yeah. And, you know, at the end, he's going to give some really great tips on places to go. Yeah. His top travel <laughs> tips, uh, which are going to be really, really important to listen to at the end. And we're really excited to have him on. Before we bring him on, we're going to just talk about a couple things. We have our health and happiness hacks challenge about the Mediterranean lifestyle and living a life that's true and exciting and healthy so that's going to be coming up november 12th and if you go over to oliveyourlife.org some people they think it's .com and .ca it's not it's .org and if you go into the get started tab there you will actually see all the things that we have available that are free for you so we've got our downloadable um eight uh, principles to the Mediterranean lifestyle that you can do from anywhere that we talk about. We have the three tools to help start you on your Mediterranean lifestyle journey. And then, of course, we've got our challenge, which we're so excited about, that's going to be happening next week. And it's five days of great tools that we're going to be sharing every day from 12 to about one. Yeah. 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 Um, tools to get you to be healthier. I mean, I, I talk about it took me 48 years to find this man so it takes i want to be around with him for another 48 years so he can, can enjoy can, can you imagine 49, 49 years please don't wait for it <laughs> <laughs> our journey is kind of interesting that's for sure so anyway we're going to bring on jack home here so dario if you could introduce him and just okay is mr parisi here I is think he is. Mr. Parisi. He's got to get his um, his camera on, though. Let's see if he got him on. Yeah. This is the greatest thing about technology, because technology always gives you an opportunity to be challenged. And always thinking. Can you hear me? Parisi, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh! We had some beautiful... Oh, look at that. We want to be there. Look at this beautiful scenery. It's Calabria. I'm in my studio, by the way, guys. Oh, goodness gracious. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about some beauty there. Uh, aside from I thought we are going to talk about food, guys. I'm hungry. Now, you know, I said, let's talk about beauty. Aside oh, from beauty. yourself. Yeah. Hmm. Let me, should I take my glasses off? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Beauty. And that's a gorgeous picture. Oh my God, isn't it? Yes, isn't it gorgeous? That's, that's Cal you. you know that that's Tropea, by the way. Tropea is in Calab, uh, southern Italy, of course. Um, as you know, we have uh, four regions. So in Calabria, we have Calabria, then we have Vibo Valencia, Catanzaro, and Cosenza. And this is an, this is closer to Catanzaro, of course, and the wonderful uh, area of the Mariogno, um, as you know, Dario. Um, be beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, uh, millions of uh, tourists go every year. Uh, the food is impeccable. I, I love the food over there. I love the people. They're fantastic. And of course, the scenery, the beaches, absolutely beautiful, as you noticed. Well, it looks very sandy there because I know in some areas in Italy, I find that it's a bit rockier. So it looks much sandy. Yeah. Well, you know, um, there's a saying. Uh, there's a saying in in Calabrese or in Italian that uh, obviously that uh, whenever you see like little rocks, uh, it's cleaner. So because the sand, of course, you know, has dirt. So therefore, the water, you as you notice, is clear. Um, it's wonderful. So, but a lot of people, you know, I mean, they're fanatic with their feet. They don't want to step on stones and uh, they want to just step on sand, which is fine to me. I mean, I have no problems with that. Um, you just got to get used to it, I guess. But th that's what beach beach shoes are made for, right? <laughs> well, it's interesting. We were in um, in Capri, and I must have very delicate feet. I don't know. <laughs> Dirty okay. walking normally along all the rocks, no problem. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think it's yeah. something you got to get used to. It's so beautiful, though, and you're right. I mean, if the water is cleaner, why not? Absolutely. It's to get used to, right? You know yes. what is you know what is also very famous tropea for. Tell me about for La their cheese. Cipolla di tropea, the La, cho La cipolla di tropea. Yes, yeah. the red onion. The red onion. Right. And you think about 
you know, you know, we did, we, there is the Vidalia onions here in North America, and there is the Tropea onions, which is very utilized most of the menu in 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 Europe. I should not just say Italy because the Chipotle di Tropea now is getting imported over here because it's unique. And why is why is onion unique? The, first of all, because the wood is surrounded, you know. Some of the salty air that comes in, that comes in from the ocean really changes the structure of the actual uh, the actual onion, and it's sweet. I love it. I love it. Okay. I can put. I, and I need that. I need it. Is it it's, it's, than it's, a onion? Uh, it's 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 different. It's definitely different. It's unique. It's it's less gassy, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. That's it's true. I'm not. There's no. a thing about that, and um, you know, and chefs like Dario, they use that chipotle rosa, of course, um, often in uh, many many uh, recipes. But um, it's the taste that is a little bit different. And then the other the other thing that you should mention is that one thing, another thing that's popular in that area is that the peperoncino rosso. Peperoncino rosso obviously is the uh, the pepper mm -hmm. the uh, and uh, you know for those people that love chili you like chili right Anita oh yeah oh yeah yeah so um, for those that like fresh chili pepper uh, I mean it's one of the it's one of my favorites too I, I love it I can't eat much of it but uh, you know we really enjoy it. and then of course the the seafood um, the the pasta uh, the fresh pasta that they make. Uh, they also, by the way, another thing that is, is their specialty is the ice cream. And uh, the ice cream, Dario, as you probably... Uh, Anita doesn't like gelato. She no, absolutely doesn't like gelato, eh? Oh, my God. She loves it. She <laughs> loves it. Are you kidding me? Uh, she she actually... She Don't tell my stories, Dario. Come she, on. She moves around <laughs> this one of gelato places. Yes. And... <laughs> Yes, indeed. And also the um, mozzarella. Mozzarella is also very popular. And there, that, the reason for that behind that is, of course, because of the milk is uh, fresh. Um, you know, the cows, they eat natural. And um, it's, it's, that's, what, that's what's the beauty about the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean diet, as we shall say. Um, so Calabria has a lot of that to offer. And I love Calabria. My parents are originally from Calabria. I was born in Toronto, but uh, I had the great pleasure of um, experiencing and living in Italy. Um, you know, uh, I was raised also in the area of Calabria, so therefore I've experienced a lot. And, uh, you know, you're talking about 10 minutes in the mountain and 10 minutes you're on the beach. So just imagine that. Incredible. I mean, in the summers, in the summer, you're, you're surrounded by heat, uh, 40. 50 degrees, sometimes 49, depending. But also when you look at the mountain, you see the snow. It's it's incredible. How come, what is that thing behind you that looks like a beef stecca? <laughs> <laughs> is this, is this what you're talking about? My microphone? <laughs> oh, oh, you're the island. So, yeah, no, no, no. The island, uh, obviously, uh, I mean, the tropea is, uh, is uh, shaped uh, in, in a different way. Uh, that's the beauty about it. And and one thing they told me, by the way, the mayor of Tropea, I, I had the great pleasure of uh, of uh, uh, interviewing him in my past show, radio show. And the, the mayor told me that uh, what they're doing, all that area, they're going to be lighting that up for Christmas. So you can imagine, you can imagine the show that you can see. I mean, you can imagine the light, the lights, the Christmas lights, uh, the beauty, the atmosphere, because uh, you can really feel the atmosphere. And I think we're all missing that, by the way. I think we should go to Tropea. I think we should go to Tropea. And uh, let's uh, cross our fingers that things will get better. I'm going to be Mr. Positive today, by the way. Good. Uh, I'm Good. in the travel industry, and I'm going to be Mr. Positive. And I can tell you that uh, these numbers will be going down. Uh, we are going to be getting vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. And I hope that a lot of people that are listening to me, it's your choice, but I encourage you to get uh, vaccinated because uh, we're trying to end uh, the world, the war that uh, is uh, causing a lot of problems. I was just reading uh, some of my texts and, you know, unfortunately, I've lost a lot of good friends uh, due to COVID and it's very sad. But anyways, on a positive note, uh, traveling will resume. We will be going to Italy again. Uh, we will we'll be going to the Caribbean, and uh, I'm looking forward for that. And I'm sure that you two uh, are looking forward for that. I, I can imagine Dario, you know, uh, preparing a nice dish on, under a fig tree. Can you imagine 
Oh my God. I'll be the first one. I'll be the first one over there. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's such a beautiful place. Um, Italy and all the adventures they have and the food is unbelievable as well. Right. Absolutely. No, we absolutely. We talked about doing some work together with you guys. Yes. It'd be interesting yes. to see what, uh, what comes about and what people think. Maybe. I, 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 I like to hear from people too. Where they'd yeah. like to go. Yeah, I like to hear from people. And um, my partner just got back from uh, from a fam trip uh, in Sicily. And Anita, you know what that means, fam trip. Yeah. Um, so uh, he um, actually, what he explained to me is that, that there's some there's a lot of potential. Let's get that straight. Because you're talking about um, culture, you're talking about history, you're talking about cuisine, you're talking about everything in one. And uh, I think Italy and the uh, uh, Dario can confirm that um, Italy has that to offer. And that's what I like. You know, when, when they tell me that Italy is in economic uh, crisis, I say to myself, it's impossible. It cannot be. There's no way because even a stone, historical stone is worth billions of dollars in Italy. Like, you know what I mean? It's uh, there, there's there's no number uh, to be given to um, a beautiful country like Italy. Um I'm all for Italy. I'm all for all over the world, the different cultures. And that's the beauty about Canada, by the way, is that uh, we have mixed cultures and I get to practice those cultures. I get to practice those dishes and I get to practice their their views and uh, their religion. So whatever, whatever the case might be, I love it. I think it's great. So we're very fortunate to live in a country like Canada. But at the same time, we're also fortunate to be able to represent our country of origin. Um, uh, you know, uh, I know that that would keep some talking about Milano and, uh, you know, Milano, Milano obviously is, uh, the capital of shopping and, uh, there's so much to be done, uh, in, and, but there's a lot of history too, right? Dario, you're talking about the Duomo, you're talking about, I mean, so many, uh, any the, the great food that, that, uh, you know, Milano has discovered in the, in, in the past. Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I, I, that's, that's what I went to school for is to be a travel agent, as you know. And yes. I was out of the industry for a while and then went back and, and was doing retreats for people. But Italy to me is one of those places that you can visit to over and over again and you still don't really see it. And that's what I'm learning now that Dario and I are together and every year we go for two months minimum and go to different regions and to different places and there's different types of food. It's all delicious. Different Absolutely. types of people in language. When I think I got a little bit of Italian under my belt, <laughs> we go to another region. I'm like, what did they say? <laughs> you know, but it's so fascinating because I think it's going to be another 10 years and there's still more to see. It's not just the, the you know, Milano and the Florence and the Rome, even though they're absolutely stunning and it's a must see and go to. More. And, and Venice, I mean, I can never get enough of. Um, but there's still so much around Italy to go to that you could be going there forever. Absolutely. And the world now has changed. Um, I mean, technology has changed. So therefore, you can communicate better with um, Italy, for example, all over the world. You can communicate better. You can travel better. You can, um, I mean, there's thousands that leave daily from states or from wherever our, our viewers are looking at or following from and um, it's easy it's very simple to get to italy it's very simple to check in in a hotel now the beauty about that also is that uh, they speak the language they speak the english they speak french spanish so um people uh people are updated in um in uh, studies and uh, languages and uh of course like you know like you've mentioned the book Food. We talk about food. One of the reasons why, and I'm sure Chef uh, Dario can confirm is that one of the reasons why food is good too in Italy is because uh, the ingredients that they use are fresh. They're they're natural. Um, there's no uh, there's no contamination of uh, of medicine or whatever we want to call it. Uh, um, you know, it's all natural. I mean, there's people that just pick a leaf from a tree and just put it in a in a pan, for example, right? And that, that means a lot. It's funny you say that because we were just having a, a conversation. Um, then it was stated. Then Italy potentially in the next few years will probably be the strongest country in Europe. Okay. Because the way they're setting themselves, the understanding what they have to offer, because the biggest problem, let's be honest, uh, Giacomo, 
and I'm Italian, and I'm the first one to say I know it. what he's going to say. Italy is the most beautiful country in the world, but there is one problem. You know what it is? Us, Italians. We do yes. not appreciate yes. our own beauty, and we take it for granted. And we realize... I think I, but I think if I may interrupt is that sure. our children, my children, uh, uh, my children are learning. Yeah about um you know italy and they're appreciating more and more what italy has to offer and uh being uh, also from second generation just to give you an example me and my wife uh, we're second generation but uh however we we like we we like to go back and we like to go uh and see where our grandmother used to live and uh you know and uh, the towns and their characteristic uh you know the way they're built and they're still standing those old houses uh, and, and, you know, what they're doing to those houses, by the way, those old houses from the 1800s, for example, they're transforming them inside to new homes that uh, are very acceptable to, to visit and to live in. They're modern. But the outside, uh, and that's what, that's what the towns are trying to promote. This is one good thing about Italy. Yeah. The towns are trying to promote their, um, the artistic look of their towns to keep it the way it is the outside of a house before you move a rock from outside of a house wow you need a lot of permits dario and uh, that's important i think that's really really important because you know it's like the coliseum you can't change the coliseum in a square box right you got to keep it the way it is and uh, that's valuable yeah i i find that, that to go back again you know you you don't appreciate where you're from i think that is every culture yeah, Everyone absolutely. always thinks the grass is greener. And, and I think the vision you have to come from is of adventure. So wherever you are at that moment, to live in the moment, to, to look at the country you travel to, don't just look at the top destinations, explore, be with the people, really understand it. And where you're living at home too, there's so much to be able to be had absolutely. and see. So if I, may, if I may kind of stereotype the relationship between us and uh, Dario and Anita, is definitely we are going to be doing things together. We are definitely looking at uh, organizing some really important uh, groups um, in Italy, uh, Sicily. Uh, actually, Dario, I got something new for you because uh, the yeah. region, the region of Emilia Romagna, got in touch with me. It's very strange, but uh, they want to promote Emilia Romagna, and who better than you that knows and uh, Bologna and the foods in uh, in the area? They're phenomenal. I love it. So um, we plan to definitely uh, offer something different than uh, perhaps than it was offered before. And you're going to say to yourself, well, so what's, what's so different that you're going to offer? Very simple. We're simple people. And uh, we enjoy company. We enjoy people that want to learn, learn how to cook, or want to learn about culture, and, or learn about sports, or learn about whatever the case might be. And we're there for them. And that's what we plan to do. Trying to take our groups into the next level. That level, uh, I'm sure that our kids also are going to appreciate that. And that's what I'm looking forward for. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. There's so much to, to learn and engross yourself. And, and it's not, I call it another bucket of rocks. You know, I, I remember being, it was- you have, some, you have something with rocks, by the way. I noticed ah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But I remember, remember when Air Transit first came out? Yes. They had a mystery travel uh, and I actually mm. won it. So they did a mystery tour to Niagara Falls and back again, I think it's right. 30 something years ago. And I remember this one uh, group of people that was on this tour bus with Trafalgar. Um, they were like, they had been on two Trafalgar trips and they said, oh my gosh, not another bucket of rocks. Because by this time it was the same type of thing over and over again. But with what we're planning, it's, it's expensive experience it's getting in there it's getting your hands in there really feeling like you're an italian and and engrossing yourself with the people and the delicious food and learning new things right i have this vision of myself under a tangerine tree picking a tangerine uh eating it and perhaps making a salad out of that just to give you an example these are the kind of things that we're um interested in doing we want to we want to bring back uh, for example, uh, oil, olive oil, the true olive oil. How is it made? I mean, if I was to tell you that uh, olive oil is actually grained by rocks, big rocks, ro you know, these big rocks, they're like wheels of rocks. So 
and and to get to see that like to pick your own olives from an olive tree that perhaps you can grow or they can grow for you and name it after Giacomo or Dario or Anina and then you know uh, actually see where the olive oil comes from because there's a lot of confusion by the way and Dario can confirm that about olive oil no ladies and gentlemen when you see olive oil that says from Italy read the label because it, it probably was bottled in Italy, but it's not really olive oil. Forgive me for bringing this up because it's something that bothers me, you know, and I respect every other countries that deliver oil to Italy, but don't lie to us. Don't tell us that this olive oil is actually produced in Italy when it's just bottled in Italy. Okay? So we want to pick that olive, you know, put it in the um, front oil, uh, get, get, get oil out of it, of course and bottle it and bring it back to Canada. Can you imagine? And uh, so that's one of them, you know, but the other one could be also like, you know, picking your own um, vegetables and uh, putting them directly in a pan and, and uh, you know, and seeing how you take care of, uh, because you know what, that is coming back here in Canada too. We, our children are learning how to cultivate the Dario. And that's important to me, you know that? Um, because things have changed. Um, well, it, it has, it has, you know, it, even ourselves. I mean, the, the the situation we've been in, we start cultivating ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. start, uh, well, yeah. you know, get, getting more time put in our gardening, growing your vegetable, learning, making mistakes. And it's funny because that was traditional things that were done centuries ago that we never really considered because it was a commodity going through somewhere and grab things. Now we, have, we take more pride. I mean, you know, we, you know, in the summertime our breakfast, you know, it's like when you're in Italy, fresh sliced tomato from the garden, a, a, a little bit, a little bit of cucumber. Just an FYI, just an FYI, I haven't had lunch yet. Yeah, I know that's okay. what I'm saying. Sorry, take it easy. Take it easy, Some warm ricotta, olive oh oil. Oh my god, <laughs> that's it. But it, yeah, yeah. but the, the the biggest thing is the simplicity. You know, when we talk about travel, and you guys are the expert on um, obviously in the travel world, you know. What is travel? Travel actually is going to give you an opportunity to open your mind and soul, but understand the culture aspect. Because I need to say, right, if you just go to a place for the purpose of travel, or see, it's another bucket of rock. But if you go there with a the purpose of really embrace yourself into the culture, understand a little bit of that culture, food, arts, whatever it is, even trying to, you know, Bastardize your Italian because you're trying. Yes. That's okay. Do it all the time. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know what? We've been to places, um, and, and this is what we say to the audience sometimes engage yourself into the small places because the big city are wonderful. Like you said, Milano, it's Milano. Yes, Venice is Venice. Great and wonderful to visit, but there's more little places outside. And you really don't really know. Absolutely. There's a lot of history, there's a lot of. Um, um, culture and there's a lot of different foods as a matter of fact every region has its specialty like if i say soprazzata okay I, you know the reason i got what i have behind me in tropea uh soprazzata they make one of the best soprazzatas in the world right but what would it take uh, us for example to take a group down to tropea and say to uh, the ex experts can you teach us how to make soprazzata because we want to take we want to take what you know to Canada, and we want to continue that tradition. We want to continue it in our homes, right? And that's what I'm looking forward for. That's what I want to do. Um, because, you know, I want to learn how to make wine, good Italian wine. You know, my, my parents used to make wine, right? Do I know how to make wine? Not really. I mean, from scratch, by the way. Eh? Now technology has changed. Yeah. I know it's easier just to go to the liquor store and buy a bottle, but it's not the same. And... Uh, it's different. Home, homemade wine is different. Let's face the fact. But it's also the joy and uh, the fact that you're making the wine. Because while you do that wine, me and Dario, you know, are squeezing the grapes with our feet or whatever. That's what I was saying, you're going to have to do your bare feet. Or, <laughs> I, I mean, in, in this case, I don't know if Dario has bigger feet. But anyways, well, you know, he'll probably get it done in, 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 in 10 minutes. But uh, um, uh, jokes aside, it's the fun that you have doing it together. 
you know it's the fun part that uh, you know while you're doing that there's something on the grill cooking and then you know and then, and then there's the piece of cheese with the, the nice glass of wine that you have you you loosen up you you tend to forget all about your problems and or the existing problems that are in the world um, and uh, you know these are valuable things in life that we are missing ladies and gentlemen so i'm up for that so anita I want you to get ready because we're going to tropea. You're going to learn how to make suprazzati. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, if you want to give me your, your, your size of your shoes, I will buy you a nice, uh, I'll buy you beach shoes for the rocks, not to worry. Okay. And uh, we're going to, we're going to have some good times. I promise you that Sicily, I mentioned Sicily, Sicily, oh my, oh my, my yes. Sicily fish, uh, Sicily, uh, different uh, plates that are traditional. Cannoli. Incredible. I cannoli. Oh my God. I cannoli. I cannoli. Because why, why do people say cannoli Siciliani? Cannoli. So let's explain that. Would you explain, please? What is a cannolo Siciliano? Uh, cannolo, cannolo, basically it, it's, it's funny because when we talk about, regional cuisine right we talk about regionality and what is known about what is known about sicily well number one is the fruit and the citrus okay a lot of their their um their dairy product ricotta the ricotta in sicily is phenomenal okay you can know basically this little dough fried dough that you deep fry in these little tubes and you stuff it and when you stuff it, you don't stuff it just with ricotta, which is confusing, you know. You stuff it with candied fruit that is regional from the area because the, the region of Sicily is also known for the candied fruits. That's okay? right. A lot of sugars, okay. Pistacchio di Bronte. Pistacchio. Bronte is a place also that is very well known for the pistacchio. That's in Sicily. That's all part of the region. And I think sometimes, uh, you know, you know, I happen to be going to places and you have a cannolo that only tastes like cream. But that is not a cannolo. That's just not. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, then we, we have to go to Sicily too. And what about, what about, what about arancini? arancini? So the arancini siciliani, Anita, have you ever had one of those? Oh, yeah. yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Aren't they delicious with, uh, so it's, uh, it's a ball, basically rice with uh, cheese, uh, fresh cheese. Um, you, there's peas inside, there's uh, grounded meat if you want. You can put whatever you want in these arancini, right? But the way, the, in Sicily, the way they make them, they're like absolutely to die for. Um, really cool. I do recommend them. them. I do recommend them. 12 yeah. o'clock 12, 12 with Giacomo, he's making a star. <laughs> there you go, well, there you go. But listen, We've got three I mean, minutes left of this this uh, this episode. Go ahead. Um, we wanted to cover a couple of the questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to to add before I ask some of the questions? No, please ask it. Go ahead. Because I think we're going to have to have another episode to give people where we're actually deciding to go. Yes. Maybe they'll give us some feedback. And perhaps we can broadcast live from that location too. Oh, uh, wouldn't that be? <laughs> That'd be nice? perfect. That's a great idea. Um, where is the top place to travel in Italy right now? Um, in, 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 so if you talk about uh, where tourism likes to travel to, of course, I'm going to talk about Venice. Of course, I'm going to talk about Rome. And I'm going to talk about, you know, um, um, even Le Puglie or Naples uh, or, or Sorrento and stuff like that. But there's other beautiful places in Italy, too. So when we say the top place, of course, I'm going to say Venice. I'm going to say Rome. And I'm going to say also, like, you know, for depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for a quality of life of beach, then I'm going to recommend the south part, Calabria and Sicily. The food is also excellent. But if you're looking for uh, historical, of course, Rome is number one. That's the capital for me. Um, Venice is incredible. It's all to discover. Just the fact that you're talking about a sea that is on the water, that lives on the water. In the morning, early mornings, they get up actually to pump water out of the streets because, as we know, they say that Venice is also sinking. I don't know if you heard about that, but uh, it is true. So to keep it alive, what they do is they pump. And you see all these pumps all over every road in Venice, and they try to pump the water out to keep it alive. We, we actually have a picture of ourselves that we are walking as <laughs> Aqua Alta, and we have the water yeah. under our knee. I love under that. Knee. The, but that's an experience, there. folks. It was, it was hilarious. But I think that Venice probably would be one of the um, 
the best places to visit right now in Italy because it's so bare and normally it's so packed. So that's there are right. so many beautiful places right now, but that's one place I would think that would be yeah. a top, even though there's a million of, of really good ones, right? Absolutely. It depends on the season, right? Yeah. So for, for skiing, for example, Trentino Alto Adige. And I think Dario can confirm that with me. Uh -huh. Some of the some of the beautiful views of the mountains, the Alpi, we call them. Oh my God. Absolutely like incredible. Yeah. Next uh, question. Another one was was COVID rules. Like what is the the recommendations to get into Italy as of this moment? Okay, so uh, their everyday rules change, everybody. So um, my recommendation to everybody out there, you don't, need, as long as you're double vaccinated and, you know, you don't really need a antigen test, but I do recommend that you get an antigen test before getting on a plane. And I give an example. There was a couple of people that, passengers of mine that actually were nervous about flying. So they were coughing. It was a nervous cough that they had. Mm -hmm. So uh, automatically, what's the first thing that comes to their mind um, is, COVID. So uh, having an antigen test is like uh, a free passport to travel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's better um, uh, when you come back into Canada, but it's the Canadian government that requires that wants the PCR test. So right now to travel to Italy, as long as you're double vaccinated, no problem. You don't have to quarantine, by the way, with a double vaccination. If you don't have a double vaccination, you must quarantine. You must inform the authority is that you're not vaccinated and it, it doesn't mean that you cannot go to Italy you can still travel to Italy however there are restrictions and I recommend like everybody to everybody out there check your government sites before traveling yeah yeah that's a very good one because you know asking these questions it could be it could change in an hour from now so it's always that's good. correct <laughs> that's correct it's good to check um where is the best place to stay in the fall months in Italy in the fall months, um, of course, fall months are probably dedicated to shopping. Um, you're not going to get really beach. I mean, yeah, you can see the scenery, but you can't go in the water. It's cold, eh? Let's face the fact. Italy in the winter, it's cold too, right? Um, the, the, only, uh, the only good thing about Italy is that it's, uh, the, the heat starts around May, for example. And those, you know, you can start going to the beach from May to October. But those are the months that you could go to the beach. But uh, uh, besides that, um, my, my recommendation for if you have to visit Italy because you want to visit the monuments, the, the Vatican, for example, Rome is good, or uh, you want to shop, then yeah, in the fall months, I recommend those uh, cities. Yeah, and I guess it always changes from year to year because I think this fall, it was quite cold in Italy. But I know one time we were in Sardinia in October and we were on the beach. It was stunning. <laughs> it was beautiful. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I guess it can always change as well, right? So anyway, I think we need to have another interview. I think that's going to be really important. Pleasure. And probably give the, the listeners something more to, uh, to, to talk about that we're going to be doing together, which will be great. But I promised them that I would leave with um, your top three destinations that you have in Italy and, um, and top travel tip. Well, travel tip, let's stay safe, number one. Number two, always check your government sites before traveling. Um, another recommendation, one thing we haven't done in a long time, I'll bet you any money, is we haven't checked our passports. When do they expire? Uh, remember that if you plan to travel, let's say tomorrow, um, make sure that your passport doesn't expire six months from tomorrow on because you have to renew your passport before that. So it's a good time for us right now, perhaps that are not people that are not traveling, you know, renew your passports. Even if they're not expired, they expire, like for example, in three, four months or a, a year from now, I would, I would just renew it. Renew it. It's easier to renew now. You send it in and the renewal is very, very easy to do. But if the passport expires, then you got to go through the whole routine to get a guarantor. You have to get, um, you know, uh, put more information inside your, your passport form. And there's more uh, long waits for a um, passport that perhaps is, is not valid anymore. I was in that situation once where um, my passport was expiring, I think, five days after the six months. Yes. And so I actually went got to lucky. the airport and they said, you're definitely not staying an extra five days, right? You can't change anything. Right. And I was like, oh, because I hadn't that's realized a, it. So it is a very good tip. Because people don't realize, I think it's a day, but it is six months. So it's that's really a really good tip because a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people really don't know. But the yeah. six months period, it is. It is. Yes. And, and the other tip that I really, I mean, I like to suggest out there, just make sure that you have 
a medical coverage when you go to another country outside Canada. That is also important. I had a passenger that unfortunately had to get back with their ambulance and he wasn't covered. It costed him $130,000 Canadian to get back to Canada. So, you know what, you know, for a hundred dollars extra, um, you know, let's look at these insurances that there are available out there. There's also COVID insurance now too. I know it's a, it sounds like it's all a business, but unfortunately, that's the way it is. Yeah, gotta be safe and sorry, yeah, right? especially to, during these times. Yeah, so, you don't want yeah. to get a so what are your top places to visit in Italy? Where right behind you would be one, I'm assuming. Yes, Calabria is is my um, one of my uh, treasured destinations that I love uh, very much. Of course, I and I love Rome. Uh, that's uh, number two, um, three Venice, Venice I love, uh, but also the Napoli area is also great for the food, for the people. They're 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 fun to be with. They're, there's great shopping, there's great deals, great bargains. Because if you don't, if you go to Napoli, remember one thing: they would appreciate more if you bargain with them than if you don't bargain with them. Really, <laughs> I didn't know. Yes, that. it's a it's a character, right? And I love it. I think you know, it's great. You know, it's it's um, it's the conviviality factor. I say because even bargaining is your convivial. You know, you kind of, a, you engage in this thing, you walk away, then you go back. You know, some of my fun memory are on the markets because you go there, you're looking at something and he says, right. how much are you going to give me? It's very cheap. And he says, well, I'll give you such. And he says, no, give me that. Okay, no, sorry, I'm walking away. And then you negotiate, you have a conversation. But at the end of it, you might get a deal, you might not, but you made another friend. <laughs> and you know, one, one thing I've learned, one thing I've learned, and I, I, I try to teach that to my kids, because my kids, when they come with me, for example, and we go to Porta Portese in Rome, and we go shopping in the Mercato, as you know, Dario, yeah. one, of, one of the be most beautiful places and, uh, and fun, uh, you, uh, I teach them that everything is negotiable. And even if they give me two, two two dollars off or a dollar off but i still win so you know what it's fun it's fun and uh so i've learned that uh, thanks to that experience i've learned that in life everything is negotiable yeah. so um what can i say maybe many stores over here in canada are listening or watching this uh show right now and uh, they're perhaps they're saying to me make sure you don't allow that guy to come into our store <laughs> why not oh that's so funny <laughs> So I think that's our questions for today. And so it's the oh. end of today's episode. But the four of us, we have to get together for a dinner for sure. Yes, so my wife is my wife is looking forward for that. And I like to say hello to her because she's uh, uh, she's a big fan of yours, Anita and Dario. And um, so uh, fun times is when you're in good company. Oh, for that's sure. right. That's a that's a really good way to close the segment. Yeah. I love and, it. Yeah, and I think we should be doing more of that. We should appreciate it more. This uh, COVID uh, kind of uh, uh, gave us a message that life is too short, but life in, in a time will say, la vita è bella. Life is beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Ciao. I really appreciate it. A ciao, ciao. <laughs> a nice talking to you. Ciao, a presto. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao a tutti.